Hey, how are you doing? Uh, had bad traffic accidents all over the place. It just got here. Where are we? Let's see. Start video. Okay. We there? Yeah. We're here. I'm meeting everybody I can. Can you hear? Oh, can you hear me? There we go. Okay, good. A little worried. Yeah, just a little, little uh, traffic issues. Running mm -hmm. late on a teacher's meeting. You tell those teachers to better get their act together. We got Zoom Bible study to do, right? <laughs> I, I was saying that for sure. And we're not on Armenian standard time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we'd still be another hour away. At least. At least. <laughs> Good to see everyone. Good to see everybody. We're gathered. Let's see. Marsha, how are you, sweetheart? Unmute so we can hear you. We have a new member, Marsha Alabachan, who has been a Sunday school teacher and superintendent for about 123 years, I think it is, isn't it, Marsha? Maybe 124. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's right. I forgot that other one. Yes, yes. She was Eddie Bruce's boss, right, Eddie? Where is he? <laughs> He's down the bottom. He hasn't unmuted yet. Oh. He was my boss, too, at one time. Oh, yeah? Then you got even with him, right? Not a girl, not a girl. <laughs> Hi, Linda. How are you? Good to see you, Takas. My girl. Hi, Linda. thank you. Linda how are and you? Mama. Good to see you. In, our, in, in Australia. Janet, welcome back. We miss you, Takas. Unmute, Jenna. Janet, unmute. Janet, we don't hear you. Okay. There we go. Put your volume up a little bit. I bet your husband never said that. <laughs> Audio setting. There you go. Here you go. Jennifer's with us and Zaz with us. Nice to see you folks. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. My friend William is there. Eddie, I can't see you though. I'm here. I can't see you. How's that? There we go. <laughs> there we go. There's my man. Okay, so Australia has their Bible study with Archbishop Haigazun at 9 p.m. our time. So we're going to lose them, right? No, Dad Hyde, we just had it. It was, oh. at, it was at 11 a.m., our 11 a.m. It's now midday. Oh, so I don't have to worry about the... Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't have to join today. <laughs> I don't have to worry about Next him. Week. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. He's a nice man, but you know, you can't get on your nerves sometimes. <laughs> but I love him dearly. But I love him dearly. Okay, we're going to start with our prayer, and then we're going to get right into it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes, we ask you, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness. For the sake of him, by whom all things were made, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Okay, nice to see everyone. And as we got on board and I said, I can't hear you, I'm going to ask you all to put yourselves on mute right now. So today, 
Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. I don't have a specific passage to go over, but I want to talk about the Holy Spirit through the sacrament of baptism and confirmation. And as I said many times before, everything that we do in the Armenian church, and I'm sure other churches as well, is always connected to something else to give it meaning and foundation. Uh, one of the obvious examples is our Badrak. Why do we celebrate Badrak? Well, Jesus Christ at the Last Supper told his disciples, what? Do this in memory of me. That's our connect. That's our connection to the Last Supper. And without getting very the theological, I'm sure there are a lot of other examples that I can give you or a lot of uh, more of a full of an explanation of Badalak and our connection to it, but I think you get the idea. So today, we're going to take a look at the Holy Spirit through the sacrament of baptism, chrismation, or confirmation. Chrismation, baptism is the same thing. And we will make, I hope, <laughs> <laughs> the connection with the Holy Spirit of God, and from there to the prayers of baptism and confirmation, and also to the prayer of Saint Nessus the Graceful that starts with I confess and I worship. So I hope tonight is going to be one where it'll be a night demonstrating how everything that we do is connected. So that other connections that you may run across in times will become more apparent to you. So first, the definition, shall we say, of chrismation or of confirmation. In Armenian, we say genkel, which means to seal. Um, to seal something. It, it's, it supports, it validates, it verifies. This is a sealing. We seal by making a mark. Putting, on a, putting a seal on something validates that it is authentic. You, you've heard of the seal of approval. Uh, what was the good housekeeping seal, seal of approval? Uh, it tells you it's good stuff. Um, they would pour wax on a letter to seal it and put a stamp on it to identify that this is genuine, this is from me. Um, for the Christians, that seal is a sign of the cross. When we cross ourselves, when we make the sign of the cross, we are putting our seal on whatever it is that we are signifying. Another word for sealing, believe it or not, is amen. Amen means, yes, I agree. It is confirmed, yes. Without exception, it's valid. We do this at the conclusion of a prayer. Why? Well, because we agree with what was said and we confirm it with our word. For now and forever and unto the ages of ages, period. And then we all should say together, Amen. Yes, we agree with it. So tonight I want to begin with the sacrament of baptism and confirmation. Now, when we baptize and confirm a person into the church, the church proclaims through the sacrament, the presence and the actions of the priest, that this person now belongs to God and is a participant, is a member of the Armenian church. And as the priest places, buries the child into the waters and gives the child his or her name. This is what he states. He says, the servant of God coming from the state of catechumen, which means someone who is not baptized, to baptism, is now baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, redeemed by the blood of Christ from servitude to sin, he or she, and here's the part that I want you to listen to. Receives adoption as a child of the Heavenly Father to be a joint heir with Christ and a temple of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul teaches in his letter to the Romans. 
He said, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. In the sacrament of baptism, we sing the hymn to the Holy Spirit, Arakelo Arahlo. It's translated as the dove that was sent came down from on high with a great sound like the flashing of light. He armed the disciples with fire while they were seated in the upper room. The sacrament of confirmation, of chrismation, has the hymn that uh, in Armenian, it's Achbir Genatz, source of life, distributor of graces, O Spirit, who has come down from on high. Thou hast divided thine incorruptible gifts among the apostles. And as the priest is singing this hymn, Arakelo Aravno, he holds the dove, the receptacle of the holy muron, up high as he pours the muron either into the water or into the little uh, chalice cup that he will use later on. Both of these state the dove, the idea of the dove coming from heaven, resting on Jesus Christ. Now verse two says, thou that being above the waters did create the creatures now coming down into the waters of the font. Why do I make this point? Well, the first words in the book of Genesis tells us what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Again, we're talking connection. In the prayer of chrismation, the second part of the words in the prayer brings together the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus in the third chapter. The prayer says, O God, who art great and eternal and knows all secrets, who art holy and dwells in the saints and are the savior of all men. And Nicodemus, in his conversation with Jesus, says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. The prayer continues, who has granted the knowledge of thy truth to all them that believe in thee and has given them the right to be sons of God through regeneration of water and spirit. Jesus said, truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In the prayer, the priest says, who has also renewed this thy servant through the purifying of thy font, sanctify him, O Lord, in truth and in the light of the grace of the Holy Spirit, so that he may be a temple and a dwelling of thy Godhead and be able to walk in all the ways of righteousness. And again, the words of St. Paul that I read a little while ago from Romans, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your, your adoption to sonship. Through the service of confirmation and the anointing or the marking with Holy Muron, this is a branding upon the entire person upon the senses, upon the whole body and the soul. And each action is a strengthening of that part of the body. I hope you can see the connections that I'm trying to make between our baptism, the prayers of baptism, the hymns of baptism and confirmation, and the words of scripture. Now, Another connection that I want to make, a further connection I want to bring to your attention is the prayer of vesting of the Solomon priest in preparation for the Badarak. 
you probably are not very familiar with any of this unless you study the liturgy. But before the priest vests, he offers a psalm, he offers a prayer, and he offers a blessing over each garment that he is to wear as he celebrates Badarak. And as important as what he does, I'm going to show the connection of what he does prior to Badarak to our, our confirmation. If you have a divine liturgy book at home, I, I suggest you look at those first few pages before Badarak begins, before the singing of Hora Chorin, and you will see the psalm, you will see the prayer and so forth. You will see the blessing over each garment. We're going to go over it a little bit tonight, but if you have it at home, I think it's worth your while in looking at it. Now, the order that the priest vests is his crown. He blesses it, says a prayer, takes it and puts it to the one side. And then the white shabik, his porudad, his stomach stole, the belt, his cuffs, buzzbun, right hand, left hand, his collar or the vagas, and the shucha that he puts over everything else. Now, why do we wear these vestments? Well, we get the instruction from the book of Exodus. The holy vestments for the priests uh, that Aaron was told to wear, the vestments of his sons, and for their service as priests. In the book of Exodus, it says, these are the vestments that they shall make, a breast piece, an ephod, a robe, a checkered tunic, a turban, and a sash. When they make these sacred vestments for your brother Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests, says the Lord, they shall use gold, blue, purple, and crimson yards and fine linen. Not only do we have the instruction as to what the vestments are to be for the priesthood, but also the colors. Gold, blue, purple, crimson yard, and fine linen. I'm going to go over this, but I'm going to take the vesting, as I just explained to you, out of order, because I'm going to make the connection with the anointing of our senses and body parts during the confirmation. When we look at the prayer of the priest as he prepares to vest before Badrak, he says the following. When I hold my hand up, I want you to pay attention to that particular word, if you can remember it, okay? Oh, Jesus Christ, our Lord, clothed with light as with a garment. You appeared upon earth in unspeakable humility and walked with men. You became eternal high priest after the order of Melchizedek and have adorned your holy church. If you look in the letter to the Hebrews chapter 7, you will see this reference to the priesthood and the priest Melchizedek. Almighty Lord, having granted us to put on the same heavenly garment, make me your useless servant also worthy at this hour when I make bold to approach the same spiritual service of your glory so that I may divest myself of all ungodliness, which is a vile garment, and I may be adorned with your light. Cast away my wickedness from me and shake me out of my transgressions, that I may be worthy of the light prepared by you in the world to come. Okay. Now, maybe you're not going to remember all of that. But as the priest is vesting, he prays over each vestment. Remember the words I told you to remember. Hopefully you will. When he puts on his white shabik underneath all the vestments, he says, clothe me, Lord, with a garment of salvation and with a robe of gladness and gird me with this vestment of salvation. When he puts on the shurcha, the last vestment, 
He says, in your mercy, Lord, clothe me with a radiant garment and fortify me against the influence of the evil one that I may be worthy to glorify your glorious name. Okay, so why am I making these comments? What is the connection that we're gonna look at here? After the baptism and confirmation, the child is robed with a new white garment. It signifies that the old is put away and this child is now adorned with the new. And the child is brought before the altar, presented before the altar of God, and the priest offers this prayer of adoration. Blessed art thou, O provident God, that has clothed this thy servant with a garment of salvation and with a robe of gladness and has placed a helmet of redemption and a crown of grace on his head that is an indestructible armor against the adversary. Let's go back to the prayer of vesting. The priest prays, grant me to enter with priestly glory upon the ministry of your holy things, together with those who have kept your commandments without sinning, so that I also may be found prepared for the heavenly nuptial chamber with the wise virgins to glorify you, Christ, who bore the sins of all. For you are the holiness of our souls, and to you, beneficent God, is gl befitting glory, dominion, and honor now and always unto the ages of ages. Okay, so what's the connection? In Matthew 25, it says, at that time, Jesus is talking right before his crucifixion, before his arrest. He said, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Holy Tuesday, we offer the service during our Vesper service, the service within the service, in the remembrance of the five foolish and five wise virgins, maidens. That service that we do on Holy Tuesday is a connection to our baptism and to this prayer that the priest also offers before he celebrates am i making connections am i making this a little bit clearer hopefully that it's not done in isolation we have the prayers of baptism and confirmation that are connected to what the priest is saying before he enters before he vests and enters into the church for the celebration of of badarak and also the words that are uttered that are connected, that come directly from scripture and has its full meaning in scripture itself. Questions at this point? Or are everybody confused? Everybody confused? That's okay too. I'm confused a lot myself, but. All right, let's go on and hopefully you'll get a little bit clearer after this. Now, as I said, the priest puts first the crown, Sagalat, on his head. And this is what he says, Lord, put the helmet of salvation upon my head to fight against the powers of the enemy. Who is the enemy? Satan. A helmet is a piece of armor. We, what do we wear armor for? We wear armor to protect ourselves, to protect the wearer in battle. In our baptism, we offer prayers of renunciation of Satan. In part, this prayer reads, receive, O Lord, who loves mankind, this child who is being presented to thee. Cleanse his mind, his thoughts from all the influences of the adversaries, that is of Satan, and make him worthy to be washed of our old sins through the holy font and to be renewed by the light of thy grace 
so that together with us, you may glorify the Father and the Son. And the prayer continues. Receive, therefore, receive his portion of communion in the same fearful name, which has dispelled of decept which has dispelled the deception of Satan and has destroyed all the snares of his fraud. Look upon this servant in thy mercy, O Lord, and keep away and banish by the calling upon him of thy name, which conquers all the thoughts, the words, the deeds, and all the guiles of the evil one who was accustomed to deceive men and make them perish. So that the same, frightened by thy victorious name, may be tortured and tormented with invisible torments, and being exercised and cast away from this thy servant, may never again return to him. Then we have the renunciation of Satan. We renounce Satan and his every, de every deceit, his wiles, his counsels, his goings, his evil will, his evil angels, his evil ministers, his evil agents, and every, his every evil power renouncing, we renounce. There is this expulsion, this protection of the child during this exorcism. And yes, the army and church, we do have an exorcism. It's not like what you, <laughs> what you see in the movies, but an exorcism is performed at every baptism. The exorcism is that prayer over the one being baptized, a neophyte, has a protection against all of Satan. Not only do we pray over the child for protection, but we also offer this renunciation of Satan. We return, as we renounce Satan, we turn, we face the West. We face the doors of the church. Why, the, why do we turn to the West? That's the side of the earth where the sun goes down, the side of darkness. When we pray, at the conclusion of this renunciation, we offer the baptismal creed. We say, and now we turn to the light and the knowledge of God, and we turn and we face the altar. We face the east. So, in the vesting of four of the vestments, there is a connection to each other. When the priest puts on the stomach stole, the porudad, he says, Clothe my neck, O Lord, with righteousness, and cleanse my heart from all filthiness of sin. That that comes down. You may see sometime TV show, movies, or whatever it is, uh, a, a Catholic priest will go to a hospital and he has his a strip of cloth and he puts it around his neck and it comes down in front of him this way. That's the Armenian Pororá. That's the same thing. That's the stomach stove. When a subdeacon is ordained in our church, we take that urar and we place it on his right arm. When he is ordained a deacon, it's taken off of his right arm and it's put on his left shoulder. I have to remember. <laughs> on his left shoulder. You see our deacons, they all have the urats, right? When a deacon is ordained a priest, he comes before the bishop and the bishop takes that urat off of his shoulder and wraps it around his neck. And that vestment that we call the pururad is the urad that's sewn together. So that it's not two, stri uh, two strips of cloth hanging down, but they are sewn together. Por, the stomach, stole, por urad. It symbolizes responsibility. It symbolizes that this man is now, has gone through the order of the church and is now a priest. And as I said, he says, as he blesses it, cleanse my heart from all filthiness of sin. When he puts on the belt, the godi, he says, may the girdle of faith encircle me round about my heart and my mind and quench vile thoughts out of them. And may the power of your grace abide in them at all times. When he puts on the cuffs, the maniples, the buzzbun, 
The priest says, give strength, Lord, to my right or left hand and wash away my filthiness that I may be able to serve you in health of soul and body. And when he puts on the collar, the vagas, it's the same as when he blesses the protodot. He says, clothe my neck, O Lord, with righteousness and cleanse my heart from all filthiness of sin. After putting on the sacred vestments, the priest offers this prayer. My soul will rejoice in the Lord, for he has clothed me with a remnant of salvation and with a robe of gladness. He has put upon me a crown as upon a bridegroom and has adorned me like a bride with jewels by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, so on and so forth. He continues. It's, but remember that the prayer of the priest prior to his vesting was using the words garment, the same heavenly garment as we did in the order of baptism, as we did in, in, in the order of the confirmation. Now, following the chrismation of the child after all the bodily senses are, are anointed, forehead, eyes, nose, mouth, ear, heart, hands, back and feet, the child is dressed in his new white robe, new white baptism outfit. We come to the adoration at the altar. The priest takes the child in his arms and he holds the child before the holy altar. And this is the prayer that he offers. Remember the priest vesting. Remember the prayers of baptism. Now we come to that third part of the of the ceremony where he has been, the child is being presented before God, before the altar of God. This is what the priest prays. Blessed art thou, O provident God, that has clothed this thy servant with a garment of salvation and with a robe of gladness and has placed a helmet of redemption and a crown of grace on his head that is an indestructible armor against the adversary. Heard these words before? You hear these words before, I hope? Like maybe five minutes ago? In the other prayers? Connection. Okay. Understand that with these words, we should have no fear in the world as Christians if we believe and understand what this means, what these words means. Now, I know that it may be a little difficult just listening and not having the text in front of you to make all the connections. But I hope in this short presentation between the sacrament of baptism and confirmation, chrismation, the vesting of the priest in preparation for the celebration of Holy Badarak. Um, there is that connection that's there. Maybe it has not been apparent to you. But I, as I've said many times, many times, we do nothing in isolation. Everything is done with a reason and a connection to something else. And that something else is just as sacred and holy and important is what it is that we're doing. So now we come to that part of Bible study that I enjoy the most. I see Linda's laughing away, Linda's looking down. Marsha's not ready for this yet. Jennifer knows what's coming. Everybody knows what's coming. This is where you teach me. This is where you guys take over. The best part of it all. Question is your preparation for Badalak. How do we prepare 
understanding that the priest doesn't say, okay, let's see, brother, I go to 10 o'clock. If I get there at 10 of 10, that's pretty good. Uh, I think I'll put this on. I think I'll wear this. I think we'll sing this hymn. You got There's an order. We do things with a purpose. We do things that are attached to something we've done for 2,000, well, 1,000 years, so say. The question, why do we, or better yet, why do you need to be at Badarak early? Why do you need to be at Badarak to have sufficient time to prepare? Why? When the priest says, Badarak starts at 10 o'clock, you leave your house at 10.30, if you do. We need to be at Badarak, at liturgy at least, with sufficient time on hand to prepare our minds and our souls to enter into it. Not watch it as you go to a movie. You know, we go to a movie, it starts at 7.30. We get there at seven o'clock. When 7.30 comes along, there's 20 minutes at least of commercials telling you to go buy popcorn and cheeseburger and whatever it is and everything else. And they give you another 10 minutes of uh, coming attractions, you're riding, you're riding. So you get there at seven o'clock for a 7.30 movie, which starts at eight o'clock. We have bought that starts at 10 o'clock and we get there maybe at 11 o'clock. I've seen people that, as I'm saying, May you be blessed by the grace of the Holy Spirit coming into church. <laughs> Why bother? Why bother? So I'm coming to you and I'm saying to you, what time do you need to be in church to properly prepare to enter into the Badarak, knowing that the priest prays, he prepares what he does, is related to baptism, not only his baptism, but what you ought to do is also relates to your baptism, that understanding of the anointing of all the senses of your body, that idea of a garment of salvation. You know, when we take a test, we study, we prepare. Whenever there's anything important that we do, we prepare. We're going to enter into an athletic competition. They just had the New York Marathon. A marathon is 26 miles. No one decides a week before a marathon, you know, I think I'm going to run in this race next week. No, they prepare, maybe a year or so in advance. You make a journey. You're going to take a trip. You're going to go to highest on Jerusalem. You're going to go to France, Paris, Champions, whatever it is. You make plans. You buy clothes. You have an itinerary. You get new suitcases. You're going to make a speech. You sit there and you work on your speech so that you don't get up and sound like a dummy. If you're a lawyer in a courtroom, you prepare your defense or your prosecution so that you don't look like a dummy. You want to be prepared to do all this. Okay. You want to connect to that activity with what you are going to do, what you are going that that understanding of what you're going to enter into. A doctor in an operating room. I think I'll perform a appendectomy today. I haven't done it before. I should get through it. I'll be all right. Yeah, really? Teachers in the classroom, you have lesson plans. You have to prepare sometime for the whole year before the year even starts. There's always that preparation. Preparation is essential. As I said, the divine liturgy begins at 10 o'clock. What time do you get ready to go to church? So yeah. I've talked. I've talked about scripture as the foundation. I've talked about our baptism. I've talked about our confirmation, our chrismation, gunkel. That's why we say, uh, 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 when we talk about the, the sacrament of, of, of baptism, we talk about magurgatun. Sometimes we talk, gununk, we say sometimes too, which means a ceiling. All this so that you can teach me what you understand so far. And then we're gonna get into a second part of this. So I leave it up to you, my dear children of God. Teach me, Janet, my dear, 
Okay, I have a few things. Nice and loud, I can just about hear you. I said I have a few, few comments. Go. All right, the first one is you would not want to miss one act of an opera. Janet, you're breaking up a little bit, honey. Yeah, some, something's wrong with, I don't know what to say. Hold on. Okay. Can you um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay, so one thing is, one would never miss one act of an opera. I didn't get that. Opera. You would want to miss an opera. <laughs> so you would want to go get your seat, get whatever it is that you have to do, and watch it from the first act. But in church, people are not coming on time because it's not part of their um, duty or faith or whatever it is. I feel when I read scripture, I'm reading to five people in a church that should be 5,000 people. They're not coming. It's not part of their life. And it, it bothers me. It really does. Number two, I went to another Bible study on Saturday, and I learned something, that when you take communion and you repent, it doesn't mean I'm sorry I made that sin. It means I'm going to change my way. Repent means change. You're going yeah. to change it. You're not going to sin anymore. You're not going to say, oh, oops, I sinned. And continually sin to get, you know. Um, to, um, I'm getting bits and pieces yeah. from you, Janet. Okay, I got yeah. the part about repenting means to change. That's right. When you repent, you, you turn in a different direction. Right. That's what right. repentance is. When we sin, we turn away from God. Okay. When we repent, we approach God. We face him and we, we confess and we ask for forgiveness. But we do that facing God. And sin no more. That's right. So the thing is, is that we as humans sin. That's part of our nature. No. I got. Let me correct you. Sin is not part of our nature. We were born sin, with the sin is the abnormal. The normal right. is for us not to sin. We were created perfect. If you look at... We were born with the original sin. If, we, if you look at scripture correctly and understand the church fathers, we were created in the likeness and image of God. Okay. If mankind was created in the likeness and image of God, that means that we were created perfect because God is perfect. We decided, mankind decided, to turn away from God. But we were created perfect. That's why I've, I've, I've said in this Bible study and, and on many other occasions that when we cleanse ourselves through repentance and penance, confession, and receive the body and blood of God, we at that at that time are perfect because we have confessed our sins through the presence of the priest we are granted absolution and as the last part of the uh, 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 absolution says I reinstate you into the sacraments of the church you right. are now able to come and to participate into the sacraments of the church you have been cleansed. And right. so you receive the body and blood of Christ. And at that time, as Christ enters into you through the through, through the uh, body and blood of through his body and blood, through the Holy Communion, you are perfect. Until that time, you turn away from God and sin again. Right. But part of our confession is knowingly and unknowingly that I, we have sinned. Yeah, well, we do. Right. So it's the unknowingly that I'm talking about, you know, like we're sinning. Not that we're sinning as soon as we turn around. 
Okay, I'm, 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 you're breaking up, but I, I, just, I, I heard part of it. I wouldn't worry so much about the unknowingly. Okay. Worry about what you know. If you can take care of that part of it, you'll be all right. God will take care of the unknowingly part. Right, and communion should be every day. People think four times a, a year, you know, twice a year or whatever, but when we say our uh, Lord's Prayer, give us our daily bread. But that's not communion. The, the, the Lord's oh, Prayer at that point is not talking about communion. Well, according to Benheim, that's the Holy Martyr. Okay, I, I don't want to, you know, get into know, a spitting contest with Benheim, but right. as, as I understand the Lord's Prayer, and right. as I have studied it, that understanding is our daily nourishment, that we're asking God to be able to have us be provided with a daily nourishment. Give us this day our daily bread. That's what that is all about. But I mean, but, I didn't make this up. It's something from another. Place. But as far as receiving Holy Communion, we are to receive Holy Communion whenever we attend Bazarak. Right. It is being offered to us, and I and I use the Sunday school example. Masha, you can write this down if you want, our Sunday school superintendent. It's like going to somebody's house for Thanksgiving dinner. And now the purpose of Thanksgiving dinner is what? You are sit at the table and you're going to eat a feast. And not going, going to bother and not receiving communion is like saying at Thanksgiving time, nah, I'm not hungry, thanks. <laughs> Don't do that. You sit and you, you celebrate by eating at that table. You feast at that table. So. When we come to Badarak and, uh, and we are prepared and we should be prepared every time we come to Badarak, we receive communion. Okay, let's move on. Anyone else? Lena Takas, on mute. Yeah, dead height. Um, Go for it. Mum and I, you've convicted us both <laughs> <laughs> because we haven't been attending church yeah. Yeah. since COVID. Um, it's been a daily prayer for me, asking for God's um, guidance, wisdom to, you know, yeah. prompt me to start getting back into that routine. And mum's feeling uh, yeah. she's moved by it as well. And she's, yeah. Yeah. do you want to say something, mum? Yeah. Uh, I will try. I will try after today to start to go to church every Sunday because I feel very uh, and trouble huh? guilty. guilty because I used to go every Sunday before. No, you're not hiding gas, can I? You're the hiding gas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you shot the Havat Koger Tayam and Giragi patch, uh, be for the Devat Covet, you can tell you. I'm <laughs> Get money in the Hamar Shatrach Noragalem Arthur to Tig in the Fabric. COVID, Angelina, I think Angelina would have but COVID has truly destroyed us uh, as yeah. a church. Yeah. Um, not only has it during its heyday prevented us from celebrating Bada like with people there and, and offering Holy Communion, because as I said, and you know, the only reason we celebrate Badarak is for the reception of Holy Communion. And we weren't able to because of this COVID and because of the, the dangers that surrounded it. Not so much in that Holy Communion itself would become infected. No, Holy Communion would never become infected with anything because it is the body and blood of Christ. But my hands, the air around us, Parking with anyone um, that could cause the problem. Now we have another problem, and Lena, you meant you, you you touched upon this. 
how to get people back to church because we have always preached you are to come to church to receive Holy Communion, to receive the body and blood of God, to be in fellowship with one another. A person cannot be a Christian in isolation. We must be together as community. We must come together. We must connect with each other, connect with God, connect with scripture and everything else. And what has happened? That connection was broken. That connection was broken. We have a tremendous, most difficult job in re-educating our people, telling them they are to come back to church to receive Holy Communion, to come before God and to celebrate, you know, Holy Bother like that way. Um, how we are going to do that? God only knows. It's not only our church, but other churches as well. And on top of everything else, we have this whole understanding by the younger generation. I don't know, millenniums, generation X, Y, Z, champion that would make that, that, well, you know, I believe in God, but I don't need the church. The nuns, as they call them, N-O-N-E-S, not N-U-N. They don't, they don't need the church as such. They can worship God. They can believe in God and so on and so forth. Well, Yes, we can believe in God, but we need the church. It is the church that creates that sense of oneness with God. So anyways, we have that problem, and hopefully we can get uh, get through it soon. Anyone else? Teach me. Ah, yes, my Linda. <laughs> Teach so, me, girl. Mm -hmm, thank you. So, um... I've mentioned this before, I came to God late in my life. It's probably been in the last 10 or so years that I've participated in my church and uh, having been separated for a number of years. And I've been um, in the choir that long. And Father Aden came to our church seven years ago. And that was when I started going to Bible study. Um, so, my initial reaction is that um, it's taking me this long to feel like I have a full concept of what's going on, not just religiously, but in our traditions and our services. So it's not like, I'm not trying to say that I finally realize um, that I'm a Christian, I guess in a way I am, but. I'm trying to think of a way to say this gracefully. How many people coming into our church have even gotten halfway there? That's I, mean, I, I don't feel like, I don't really feel like, first of all, if I hadn't gone through this process, which has been a long deliberate process of Bible studies and studying and choir and learning the hymns and the translations, et cetera, et cetera, I would not have come to where I am now. And where I am now is that I perfectly understand why I need to be there and I understand what's going on and it makes perfect, it makes sense to me. What's going on in the church is making sense to me. You are connecting. Yeah, so, and I have done this with great intensity, like Good more so than anything I've done in a long time. Like Good for I am you. a business owner. I have done this more intensely than I've done with my business over the past 10 years. Good so for you. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, it's not their fault, first of all. And second of all, um, you come to it because of something that you're going through personally, not necessarily because your parents just dressed you up in patent leather shoes and took you to church. So I, I grew up in a non-religious household, uh, a Christian household, but not a totally observant household. Although my parents were probably more Christian than most people that I know um, in their actions, but it scares me that, it scares me to think that I was kind of dangling out there and that probably 90% of the people in our community are in that position versus feeling like they've evolved into their faith. So I don't know um, where we go from here. But it's very, it's very difficult 
to understand our church, to listen to a language that you don't hear, you can't translate while you're hearing, that where there are so many different services, like this past Sunday, Father Aden did instructional badarak, mm -hmm. where he was stopping and pausing and giving a presentation. And I felt like I knew about 80% of it, but that's okay, it was a good review. Um, that needs to be done with all of our services, the vest, uh, Vesper service, the morning service, like now the baptism service. This, this presentation that you're doing should be like in our church when someone's having a baptism, he should be standing there and explaining what's going on. Um, we, we don't have, we're getting that. You know, I go to other churches in Florida, they don't do it either. It's not, it's not the habit of our church to be doing that. It's not the habit of certain priests. Certain priests do it. There are certain priests that will, will take the time and do translations and, and create booklets and instructions and so on and so forth. And other priests, they don't. There's not a commentary on, on, and on, on either side. Um, but I agree that there should be some unified uh, process coming to us <clears throat> from our church leadership um, that will make the journey a little easier. Instead of walking up a 50 degree hill, or maybe it's gonna be a 30 degree hill to become Christian. Um, that's not being done. And recently the problem we've been hearing is, you know, well, COVID did this and COVID did that. Yeah, but you know, Agapave. Uh, if there's a problem that's before us, we need to learn how to solve the problem rather, just, rather than just saying the same problem over and over again. Uh, in New York, uh, the, the ministry staff has been just decimated. There is no ministry staff anymore. The only one that's left in ministry is Gilda Kupelia, Armenian language. Uh, there's no one doing religious education. Um, uh, there's nothing that's really being done in uh, mission parish work. Um, there's really nothing being done in, you know, outreach, um, social services. Well, uh, Zemtar. Zemtar. Say again? They're doing Zemtar on Tuesday, the diocese, but it's a Zoom. That, 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 that. Zoom every week. I'm, I'm getting Janet, you're going to have to tell the mouse to run a little bit faster so that you can generate a little bit more electricity so we can hear you. Vemka. I know. Vem, we, we have Vemka, but Vemka is not what we once had as a Department of Religious Education, right. Christian education, and so forth. Um, we, you're absolutely right, Linda. We need to do all these things, um, and it's not being done. What the solution is, I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't know. But you need to make noise. You need to make a lot of noise, not only within your parish community, but within the entire diocese, within the entire church. But uh, you have to get, there has to be a reason for someone to walk through that door. And I had a, re there was a personal issue in my life that caused me to walk through that door. And I, I feel like it was, um, I wasn't in a good place when I walked through the door. And I think, I don't think that um, um, there's, there's not just, there's not just a lack of involvement on the part of our parishes. There's, you have to be inspired to do this. I mean, God is an inspiration and people are really not worshiping the right things in their lives. And therefore they're not looking for inspiration to come through scripture or to come through their church. They're looking for inspiration in other areas. There has to be a reason that you walk through that door. And I don't know that, I don't know how people come to it. I mean, some people were really blessed with parents that made sure that they walked through that door consistently all through their lives. Yeah. But most of them are not. Most of them are not. One, and, comment, one comment I heard, um, I was speaking to this woman about, you know, the whole thing with COVID and everything else. Oh, but that I, it's wonderful. Sunday mornings, I can look at my computer and I have my coffee as I'm watching Badarak. It's, it's wonderful. I'm saying, really? Um, 
Yeah. Now we have to take that and turn it around and show that person and maybe a hundred thousand others that it's not so wonderful. That, okay, a Zoom Bible study is one thing, but a Zoom Badarak, nah, it's not the same thing. Um, it's a lot different. Somebody thing? else, somebody else, who else wants to speak? Say something, Jennifer, got Laura, go ahead, girl. Laura, talk to me. Yeah, sorry. There uh, we go. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Sorry, I was late coming in. Um, but um, uh, yeah, and I'm sorry. What that means but, is that uh, you coming in late means you have to make sure they can send it to everybody. Go ahead. Oh, I can't make sure. Uh, but anyway, I'll watch the recording and make up for it. Then. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, um. Uh. Yes, I was just going to say that um, when I go to church, and I haven't been like Lena for very for a very long time. I did go a couple of times. But I feel very disconnected in church. I mean, I'm I'm worshiping with everyone, but coming out of church, I feel such a disconnection because um, we we don't have like Digin Canard Lena uh, without the people that you know or the people that um, uh, are similarly um, you know committed. Um, there's not that um, community of believers that you feel that you know, we're worshipping with. Um, to me, you were talking about oneness with God. I feel that when we come into these sorts of um, sessions, I find there's greater community of believers in these sessions um, that I and we connect with one another and we connect with God. So um, I, while church has its place, and I agree with that, but, you know, two to three people, when they come together, um, you know, God is in our presence and he certainly is in these forums. So I'm just so grateful for, and I am grateful for a Facebook Bible study, uh, a Facebook Badarak, because to me it's um, it's the it's the most practical way of getting there. But I cannot have a cup of coffee or do anything while I'm watching Badarak. I have to be focused on Badarak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So and I get a front row seat each time, which is um, which is great. So, oh, but you know I understand what you're saying. You know why? You know why that's good, Laura, to get a front row seat, because all the hypocrites are behind you. You don't have to see them. Yeah. Yes. There, yeah. There, there but, are sometimes, but, but sometimes you're in a wheelchair, you get in the way. So. You're not in God's way. You don't worry about that stuff. Yeah. I know. You don't worry about that stuff. Anyone else? Can, Dan Hyatt, can yes. I just, going on from what Laura just said, um, the disconnect that we feel I'll just give you an example in church when the few times that I did go recently, um, one lady who attends church, she's in the choir, she was sitting in front of me. I was just living my moment uh, praying loud. Um, I, I could be heard, obviously, she was right in front of me. I was uh, joining the prayer. She like she gives this look like, you know, keep quiet. It just stunned me. You know, we, we should be sharing, you know, communal prayer, yeah. powerful, yeah. we're encouraged to. And then I get that from someone who's a loyal, committed churchgoer and servant behaving that way. It just turns you off. So it is a challenge yeah. to commit to going regularly to church when not everyone is on the same page as you. Cut, cut so your I, I was trying to stop myself from speaking in yeah. that in that. Um, way but um yeah that's a challenge in, in i've told you before in scripture it is written 365 times me ergenchit fear not have no yeah. fear yeah. now mm -hmm. when the priest says to you what do you say back yeah. what do amen. we mean oh we say amen okay no no no, no. <laughs> What do we say? Linda, what do you say back? Heaven hook with And with uh, with That's supposed to be said loudly by everyone. Because as I offer you the blessings of Christ, you say to me, and also with you that height. Yeah. Yeah. And also with your spirit. That should be said out loud. So my suggestion to you, Lena, 
is that when you're in Badarak the next time, and the priest turns around and says, Chalarotun Amenetun, in a loud voice with the choir, Yevin Hokvoid Kum. Now, if that woman, man, whoever the person is, says to you, Why are you talking so loud? <laughs> you turn around and become the teacher. And yeah. you say, this is the reason. See what it says here? This is yeah. what we are to say. Don't you want to pray for that eye? Don't you like that eye? Don't you think he's yeah. worthy of our prayers? We should all pray for that eye, don't you think? Yeah. You become the teacher. When I say, seed, when I say be brave, I'm not being facetious. I'm not being a wise guy. We give the kiss of peace. How do we give the kiss of peace? <laughs> We, we, like we bow yeah. to each other, we're afraid to We are to embrace, all right? Yeah. One of the worst things in the world, now you're sitting there with your mother. If you're on one side of the aisle and mom is on the other side of the aisle, you cross over and embrace and say, Christos <coughs> imech or do you ignore? That's my point. Why don't we? You know, these ideas of pews, this is a Western custom. You go to Hayastan or Jerusalem, there are no pews. The church is the church. We're all connected. And not only, through, not only through the sacrament of Holy Communion, but through the kiss of peace, we are to connect with each we other even, and with God. We don't even hug. We don't even hug. We just bow to each other. Like, you know, it reminds okay. me of those little toys that they dip the bunny into the water. It comes, pops up and goes down. It comes up. That's what it looks like this. I pledge allegiance type thing. But if, if, if we like, um, I go to a, when I'm in Miami, I go to a little community church that's Protestant. And, um, well, I've only gone to the service once. I've gone for other things there. They stop in, at the service and, and they hug each other and they shake hands and they introduce one another. And they make friends that way. And they spend time mentioned. doing it. Okay? Give greetings to one another. What, do you, what, what does that mean? Does that mean don't talk? That means go like this. Give greetings to one another. Say hi to the person. That's mm -hmm. what that means. <laughs> my mother, my mother, God bless her. She was just not well versed in the Armenian church. Although she was Armenian, she said that <laughs> when that happened while she was in church one day, she said, Mr. Tirzian turned to me and I shook his hand and said, hi, how are you? <laughs> she didn't know what to yeah. say. She That's didn't okay. learn that. That's okay. When, when you see a group of priests together during Badarak, you don't see them going like this. You see them embracing. That's they the actually kiss, Or they actually kiss each other. Give the kiss. Christos imech me and say, Vokh trunduk me meats. How do we greet each other? How do we kiss? We hug and we embrace. That's how we greet each other. How can you, you kiss a person without touching them? You go, oh, hey. Oh, I mean, we have spirit in us. Be the connector. If there's one element on this side and one element on this side, you be the connector that brings things together. You become the teachers. That's why I do this. This is why I'm teaching you. This is why I'm talking to you. Well, you, you know, one of the, Father, one thing is that we don't have lay ministries. So we don't really get a chance in a group to influence each other. You'd influence it during Badarak. But we don't really get a chance to do that. Why? We're all facing for there. There I, is no we, we. There is we don't socialize in Badarak. Badarak, Badarak is the opportunity for you to do many of these things. I say I talk to you about the word Amen, right? Do you ever say Amen? Forget being in the choir, as in the pew. Do you ever say Amen out loud? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Say it out loud. Hastad. Yes. Okay. Well, now, now with the COVID, the hugging and the thing is a little bit. Yeah, I, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, you but I, I know. But. but it'll come back. It'll come back. But there are things you can do. And like I said, this idea of just singing Amen. 
Amen means yes. Well, do you believe in what is being said? Well, if you do, say it. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? You think you could because Digan Hampadian might look at you funny? Digan Hampadian, I suppose be the luck. I oh, I agree. <laughs> become the teacher, become the catalyst, become the connector. Janet, Who's talking? Janet. Go, Janet. go. I just want to say that, you know, we are Armenian and we're Christian, but we go to Armenian church and I feel the majority of people come for the social and the culture. They're not coming for the spirit. Be the teacher. Yes. Be the teacher. I do, I do. But the thing is, <clears throat> it's less and less now. Less and less people are coming. How do you think and the we have to change it? My granddaughter, seven and nine, know more Bible than I do. They go to a Protestant church. You know, my daughter is here today, and you know, my son in law wants them to go to heaven. He's being married now and they are doing a great job. <clears throat> and when I see them, I am so totally surprised on what they come home with. Then my own children who went to Sunday school went to Armenian church. And I as a Sunday school teacher did the same thing. Jen, they know more. It, 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 it's, so not it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay, there's no question about it. it's not easy. But the way we become successful in getting our message across is by being a living example. Now, the, what I'm talking about doing Badak, it's not hard to do. If you attend Badak and you're sitting in church in the pews, Yevan Hokuikum. Open your mouth, raise your voice, and say it. Let people look at you and say, What are you crazy? Yeah, maybe. Right. But they all she's, she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. And then if they if anyone says, How come you did well, that's what I'm supposed to do. And Listen, you Dad, I, I buried my daughter on a Friday. And I'm I sorry. Did church on a Sunday. I buried my daughter, not this Friday, two years ago. We buried her. Friday, and I'm in church Sunday, and people were amazed. Oh my goodness, you're back in church? Yeah. Yes, this is where I get my salvation. Where you're supposed to be. Where I get my faith. You know, it's so I think for all the time. Jesus started out. With, Jesus started with twelve men, one of them who betrayed him, and here we are today. Right. Just do, remember Torkum Sirpa's on saying, just do it. <laughs> but then do it. We used to we used to come up with all these, you know, different ideas. Sirpa's on, we should do this, we should do this. You turn around and go, do it, do it. Why well, do it? <laughs> what are you worried about? Right. Who's gonna get mad? God's not gonna get mad. If God's <laughs> not gonna punish me, what am I gonna worry about? You, the other guy? No. When this choir sings and we come to the end of it, amen. Say amen out loud. Have you ever been to uh, uh, one of these African uh, evangelical churches? They all, they're singing out loud. They're talking out loud. I had the opportunity to preach in one once. Uh, a friend of mine asked me to come. It was an AME church. And he said, I want you to preach. Okay. And I went there. That was the first time I've ever really been involved in the service and everything else. And as I'm giving my cuddles, as I'm giving my, that's right, Father. You say it, you say it, Father. You, you're right on there, Father. I kind of got into the spirit. I like the idea. All right. After, if you if you go to Badarak and the choir sounds good, go to the choir member said, you know what, Abris, you sounded really good. Thank you. Thank you for singing so beautifully today. Mm -hmm. You see a little kid serving at the altar for the first time. Go up to that kid and say, you know what, you did a good job. Abris to us. You know what that will mean to that kid? That'll stay with that kid for the rest of his life. I'm telling you from personal experience. Personal experience, okay? When you're in church, 
Be the example. Be the connector. We have all these things that connect hymns with prayers. But if we don't connect to those things, but of it, it's just up in the air. So we sing the song or we say this prayer. And the... Place on yourself that helmet of salvation, that armor against the evil one. Renounce Satan when you come into church. Do these things. Be, be the church. This is how we succeed. Because if one person does it and the other person sees it, now there's two. And if those two people do it, now there's four. And then there's eight. That's how it works. Now, any other questions? Any other comments about the idea of connecting and scripture or what I've talked about tonight? I'm going to leave the second part for another night for our next lesson. Any other questions? No other questions. Jennifer, you're looking at me, but you're not saying anything. I can, I, I can, not, again, I, I can always tell with Jennifer, there's something in her mind. <laughs> waits and waits and waits. Come on, Jennifer, talk to me, girl. It's not a question, but um, to, to, it's a comment. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't remember which dead high told me this, but a while back, he said that, I don't know if it was to me directly, but he said the choir is not like meant to be, it's not like a concert and you're listening right. to them. They're just to lead the congregation. Everybody is supposed to be singing along and speaking along and doing everything. The choir is just there to lead everybody. Who that. do they represent? The choir? The, uh, everybody, I guess, right? The whole no, no, no. The choir represents angels. Oh, the angels. Oh. The angels. Oh. Oh. And, and with the angels, we have to sing. They lead, we because the heavenly hosts are what? Continually praising God. What does the choir do? They sing the songs that praise God, all right? In our Badarak, right before we sing the Surp Surp, the priest has a prayer. Oh, it says like together with the cherubim and seraphim, right? <laughs> You've been listening. I'm proud of you. That's right. Who are the cherubim and the seraphim? The angels. The angels. <laughs> it says, now listen, and in accord with the seraphim and the cherubim, to sing holy songs and make melodies and boldly crying out to shout with them and to say, what are we going to say? Holy, holy, surp, surp, surp. We are to sing with the angels. We are to sing with Linda. We in the, in the choir. Bar, in I'm the, in the choir in the too, Linda. <laughs> in the Badadak book, it says, the congregation can sing with the choir softly. That's what I it says in the Badadak book. Well, okay, put it this way. You're not supposed to be out shining, uh, out singing the choir, okay? I don't, you don't want to send a hug up in the third row from the back singing off key because he's singing out loud with the choir. You sing with the choir, okay, doesn't mean that you try to outdo the choir. You sing with, they're leading you. When someone leads you, what does that mean? You follow them, correct? So the choir, representative of the angel, is singing with us. We are singing with them. And together we sing the, to the glory of God. Not to the glory of ourselves. Yeah, we have some deacons that they think they're on top of a midnight singing some yaleli. Uh, forget that stuff, man. You, you, you're singing to praise God, not to praise yourself. We used to have a deacon in our church when I was a kid he was growing up. As he would reach the high notes, he would go up on his toes. <laughs> He'd go up a little bit, raise up a little bit. But, you remember what to smile. That's all right. Be the connector. Be the connector. Sing with the choir. Sing boldly with the choir. When the amen is to come, say it loudly. 
Let people hear you. You become the teacher. You are the connector. It does no good to have all these teachings hanging up here unless they're employed in our lives. You're the ones to do it. You can do it. Okay, I talk too much. Michael, thank you. Uh, again, I, uh, thank you, Derai, for beautiful, beautifully explaining everything and opening our minds and hearts to be connected with the church. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. My pleasure, yeah. believe me. I learned. Yeah. It forces me to learn a little bit more. Linda, yeah. see, you don't think that, you know, you're the only one that has to learn these things. I still am learning. I tell people I read the Gospel of John and I read something and I say, I've never seen that there before. Well, obviously it's been, been there, you know, for all these years, but it it just comes out, you know, in, in my reading again. We always learn. We always try to find new things. We always try to be bold. We always try to connect. If we don't connect, then there will be that separation. We are to connect. All right? You're going to be bold? Amen? And as they say in, in my, 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 my friend's church, can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Good night to all of you. Thanks, God bless you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a nice right. so next time on the 23rd. So two weeks yeah. from tonight, all right? And be prepared. I'm going to give you an assignment that evening. Yeah. So don't be, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to come on. You'll, I think you'll like the assignment, though. All right? Uh, okay. God bless yeah. you all. Thank Bye. you all. Bye. We'll see you. Bye. Thank you. Have a blessed Thank week. You Thank too. you. Good night. Bye-bye. I'll send you the video in a little bit. Thanks, my friend. Bye. Bye.